Today we're going to be talking about honor. We're going to be talking about faithfulness. And we're going to be honoring today God's faithful servants, Apostle Michael and Prophetess Yvonne. Praise the Lord. They don't know about this, saints. Those of you alive, they don't know about this. And did you know that this week both of them are celebrating their birthdays? Woo! What better way to honor them than to talk about what God has done through them? Amen? And so, you know, God's prophetic psalmist put this together. You know, he, he hears the heart of God, and God says, I want to honor my servants. So, so today, we're going we're gonna to read the word of God, and we're going we're gonna to honor God's servants. Amen? Amen? So praise the Lord. I, I, I like this because it's a good surprise. It's a good surprise. And you, all of you are going to get a chance to give yourself a little testimony if you'd like. But, but right now, I want to I want, I want, I want, I want honor God's servants, you know, by, by giving the word of God out to them and stuff. And, you know, we're talking about the honor here. And honor means valuable property. That's one of the words. It means valuable property, and it means to be honored. And 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3 says, For those who honor me, God is speaking. For those who honor me, I will honor. And so today, uh, Michael and Yvonne, you are God's valuable property. He wants you to know that you are God's valuable property. <laughs> And I want to read Isaiah 58. If you, if you have your Bibles and you turn to Isaiah 58, and this is, this is Yvonne and Michael's heart towards God. This is their heart towards God. Those of you that, some of you have just met them and some of you have known them for years. This is truly the foundation of their heart towards God. And, and I'm going to read many other scriptures that it, it is their heart towards God. Amen. And in Isaiah chapter 58, let us start with verse 13. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath and from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and you shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor seeking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken, saints. And I want to share something with you in verse 13. It says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath. And when I read that, I said, Lord, that don't sound like what you just finished saying in the rest of the verse when he talks about from doing your own pleasures on my holy day. And so I did some research, saints, and that, you know what that means? It means if you treat the Sabbath as, a, as sacred and do not pursue your own interests, that's what God's servants do. Another translation says, if you turn your foot from unnecessary travel on the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasures, God says, I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. Amen? And so this is their, see, what I know of God's servants is they never speak their own words. They only speak what God's word says. That's what God says right here. He says, nor speak in your own words. They don't. They delight in speaking the word of God, saints. Every time you get a word from them, it's a word to uplift you. Amen? And so I want to share that. That the fir first is the kingdom of God to them. Everything else is secondary. And so when you get a word from them, when, when you see them, their desire is always the fa Father's desire. Amen? And in Proverbs 31, 25 is a well-known scripture. And I release this to God's uh, prophetess Yvonne. It says, honor and strength are her clothing. That word honor means excellence. And from what I know of my sister, it's her heart's desire to be excellent and do excellent unto the Lord. And that's what God has raised them up to do. They don't do some of the things for God. They do the best for God. If it's not the best, they don't want to do it, saints. And so I'm encouraging you right now to just, just remember when we honor, when, as we're honoring them, that th there's certain things they give up to serve God, but it's always their pleasure to do that. 
And so God wants his servant to know that strength and honor are her clothing. Her, 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 her strength is God's excellence. And in John 5, 23, it says, All that should honor the Son, all that, all, that all should honor the Son, just as I honor the Father. And that's what they do, saints. They honor the Father. They honor the Son. 2 Timothy 2.21 says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen? And so that word honor in there means pleasure and value. You both are much value to God's kingdom and to God's people. Much value, God is saying. And precious. And if you read a little more of that, it doesn't just say precious. It says more precious. And so when we, we're honoring God's servants today by acknowledging who they are before the Spirit of God. And God says, they're valuable to me, saints. These, these servants are valuable, just like you are valuable to God. And he says, I want you to know that what they do before me is excellent, God is saying. All these things God is acknowledging today. And so the Lord... Uh, when, when, I was, when I was approached by God's uh, prophetic psalmist to do this, I said, I'd be more than happy to, to give a word. He said, to honor, you know. I said, I'd love to do that. And so I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, give me a word that would that show, show this, how I honor them, how I would honor them. And he says, faithful. And he said, faithful to the faithful one. That's them. They're faithful. To the faithful one. That's who they're faithful to. And Psalms 31, 23 says, For the Lord preserves the faithful. Proverbs 28, 20 says, A faithful man will abound with blessings. With the S. They're not going to stop. In the morning. In the evening. When you're coming. And when you're going. God's prophesying that, 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 that song. I know God, I know God created that song for a time such as this to let his servants know that he is for them. He is for them. No matter what it looks like in our physical body, no matter what it looks like in the, in the economy, in the system, God is for us saints. God is for us. Amen. And that word, that word faithful man who, bound, who abounds with blessings, it means a trustworthy. They are trustworthy with the things of God. I'll tell you, you know, uh, saints, from my experience, they don't move unless God says move. And some people don't like that, but, you know, we don't, God's ways, our ways aren't God's ways. And God's servants are very trustworthy. You can trust them with their integrity. You can trust them. Amen. And it also means really, truly, indeed. And God is saying, look, my servants who are faithful, that, I'm a, that I've released my blessings, us, I want you to know they're truly, they truly, really, indeed are blessed. And God is saying that this is how God honors those who honor him. They are truly blessed. And they're truly surrounded by his presence. Amen. Matthew 25 Verse 21 says, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, that's, I like that one. That's what I want to hear. You know, I want to hear that not only now, but I want to hear when I get up to that, get up to the presence. He said, come on, Dave. I said, that's, I, I can come in? Yeah, come on in. <laughs> that's what I want to say. And God is saying that to his servants here on this earth. He's acknowledging them already here on this earth. Not only is he going to be saying that now, but he, he's saying then, he's saying that now. Good and faithful servants. Luke 19, 20, 19, 17. And he said to him, well done, good servant. Because you were faithful in very little. Have authority over ten cities, over much. I tell you, I mean, there, there's a price to pay for you to trust God. But it's worth it. If, you're, if, you're, if your heart's desire is just souls, it doesn't matter what comes your way. Because Paul says it's just a light affliction compared to the glory that is, would be revealed in our lives. 
And so if your heart desires just souls like God's apostle and prophetess is, if your heart desires just souls, everything else is going to pass away. Your goal, you will never be moved. You will never be moved. You, would, you will be as God is, is declaring over their lives. You will be trustworthy. You will, you will have a spirit of excellence. And you will be very valuable to God. And so remember that, saints. Remember God said when he, he honors those who honor him. Just honor him. Luke 16, 10 says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And that word faithful means believing and a lifestyle. Their lifestyle for God is being faithful. From the time they rise up to the time they put their heads down. Now, none of us are perfect, saints. None of us are perfect. And we were told by, by God's prophets and apostles, brother, just be willing. Just be willing. They're willing. They're willing to do whatever God asks them to do. You're in this sanctuary today, designed the way it is. Because God asked them to do it that way. And they did it. Why? To bring you in. So that you could come into the presence of God. And you can know what it is to know the true God. Everyone here. Everyone that's here right now. You're not on the milk. You're on the meat. You want to know the true and living God. It could not happen unless God's servants obeyed him in moving into this building. And taking up the, the responsibility. Even though God took the responsibility. He put them in, the, in between to say look this is what you're going to have to believe me for every month. This is what you're going to have to believe me for every year. And they believed him for why? So that you can come into a place like this and worship God and not be concerned about anything, saints. And it's not a burden to them. It's a joy. Amen. It's a joy. Amen. So I want to encourage you, saints, uh, that they are trustworthy in God. Amen. First yeah. Corinthians 1 9 says this. God is faithful. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. That's why when the Lord gave me that, I said, Lord, what did I say? He goes, they're faithful. They're faithful to the faithful one. They are faithful to God. He's the one that they look up to. He's the one that, that speaks to them. Colossians chapter 1 verse 7 says, of Yvonne, says this of Yvonne and Michael, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. For who is a faithful minister of Christ? For they, You know, say, what I know of them in our times of prayer together, is that when they pray, they, they pray from the Father's heart. They don't pray their will. They pray the Father's will. Amen. Thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. And I want to I share this with you, saints, that every time they pray, they pray that God would bless you, that God would keep you always, even those that come against them. Lord, bless them. Why? Because this ministry was raised up in love. It was raised up. To heal the broken heart, Isaiah 61, set the captives free. So those who God hands that mantle to, that has to be their heart's desire. And that's their heart's desire. And when God, when God orchestrated this and put it together and God's uh, prophetic psalms, Andrew's heart to do this, it seemed like everything just fell into place. All the ministers were, all, all the ministers were contacted. Uh, uh, my, my wife, Mary, praised the Lord. And uh, Yvonne and Michael, she sends her blessings. She's uh, uh, taking care of her father and Tracy. And uh, she wished she could be here, but she sends her blessings. But all of us, as soon as, as, soon as the, the call was given out, we all, we all got in unity and said, let's do it. And I know it was the Lord, but I tell you, there was, there was some times we had to dodge a little. I got a call from Apostle Michael today, and he's telling me, hey, you know, you know Andrew's going to be there today. And I'm like, uh, I think so. Yeah, I'm not too sure, you know. And then when we came in, I know because the Spirit of God moves in discernment in this, in, in this ministry. I know they, they were feeling something. I know they were feeling something because it, it, it was just in the atmosphere. I mean, God loves us so much. He surprises us so much, but he can't hold it back. You know, but they didn't know exactly what was going on, but they knew something. And so, you know, we're, we're you know, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy. But we're orchestrating all of this. We had to try to set up our green room without them knowing and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, I mean, setting everything up to will be perfect. And, and so when, um, when we, we decided, when we had the okay to do this, you know, let's do it, let's, you know, get everything set up and stuff like that. Um, 
I, I talked to Apostle Michael. I said, well, you know, what time are you going to be there? And I'm thinking, he can come a little later. I'll be there at 2. I'm like, oh. And so, you know, I had to hurry up and make sure and get there. And, and, but again, you know, um, this, is, this, is all, this is a great time. And, and, and saying, see this, the joy and this, this is part of honoring. You know, I mean, and you guys are the family of God. So if you're the family of God, you're our family. You know, and so again, we just want to, you know, again, the, the, the uh, faithful to the Father's love. Amen. And, you know, again, you know, I just want to, I want to share this with you. I, I, I like to research the Bible and I like to, you know, look up numbers and, and look up, you know, things. And I don't, I don't just get the scripture as it is. I, I like to look in the concordance. And, I, and, and this is just a, just a thought. I was going through the teachings and I came up with the number 70. Right? I go, what? I go, I'm going to read what it says about 70, right? And it says 70, and this is from the Bible, right? It says 70 has a sacred meaning in the Bible. It has a sacred meaning in the Bible. Now, this is from the Bible. It's not man. It's what God is saying. Amen? And so 70 has a sacred meaning in the Bible that is made up of two factors, of two perfect numbers. Now, God is saying this. Seven, seven represents perfection, and ten representing completeness and God's law. Now, man, this is deep. It symbolizes perfect spiritual order carried out with all power. Oh, my goodness. Woo, I, you know, I'm going to say that again because there's power in that. Now, now, I mean, you can pick any numbers you want. I just happen to pick this one. This, you know. It says, it symbolizes perfect spiritual order carried out with all power. That's my Jesus. That's what he does, saints. 